Hi, it's Adam from Affinity Energy uh, here today talking about construction site safety, electrical safety, um, and safety as a philosophy. We here at Affinity Energy try to be as safe as possible, and I just wanted to talk briefly about some of the personal protective equipment, the glasses to protect your eyes uh, from things flying through the air, things coming up off the ground, construction site, you never know what you're going to run into. Hard hat, uh, very important. I consider the hard hat one of my most important pieces of equipment because maybe I'm a little more subject to uh, scratches, bumps, bruises on the top of my head than other people might be. It's a little more obvious when it happens to me. Uh, gloves, uh, I love a good set of leather gloves. Uh, it gives you some pretty good uh, electrical insulation of protection from electrical shock. Um, and good grip at the same time. In addition, we've got uh, hearing protection. Uh, I like the little squishy, um, stick them in your ears, hearing protection, you pop them in. Uh, that'll take away a lot of the noise from construction equipment. Uh, in solar site construction, we get a lot of post driving machines that make a repetitive loud noise, uh, which can definitely cause some long-term hearing damage. And the high visibility vest, whether it be yellow or orange, uh, something when there is moving equipment that makes it it, even more obvious that you are there walking around not blending into the background. Um, so these are all pieces of equipment <laughs> that I recommend at any active construction site. Um, once construction is complete, the safety vest or the high-vis vest might be the one piece of equipment that you can go without. So when I travel, uh, actually when I travel all the time, whether I'm going to a construction site or not, you keep in my car um, what might be one of the biggest uh, first aid kits you've ever seen but it's got all of the equipment for a medical emergency uh, that a person might run into a need for. I don't know how to use every piece of equipment in my bag, but hopefully if I'm at a uh, location where there is a medical emergency, if I have the equipment and somebody else is there and knows how to use it, they're qualified to take whatever they need out of my bag. I got a splint, I've got a sphygno pneumometer, so if somebody needs a blood pressure taken, that's in my kit. Lots of bandages and there's a little prep kit for surgery and burn sheets, uh, poison absorbent, a uh, little kit for snake bites. A lot of solar sites in the desert southwest, uh, snake bites have been an issue. Benadryl, we've got CPR accessories, the surgical supplies, knives and hearing and forceps and flashlight and tweezers and all kinds of good stuff. So I'd rather have it not know how to use it and have somebody else that does then not have it and uh, wish that uh, we did. From an electrical safety standpoint, one of my uh, best tools is uh, this little device. It's ultimately, it's a little AC slash DC clamp on current meter, uh, but it also serves as a voltage detector. So if you've isolated an AC circuit, uh, tripped a circuit breaker, you wanna go in and do some electrical work because electricity is invisible, it's not obvious whether or not it's live or not. When you put this up to the outlet, it's gonna give you a red indication to tell you if power is present or if voltage is present. So you can get a non-contact way of verifying whether something's safe to work on. So my clamp-on meter, uh, it will give you an indication most of the time it's gonna be pretty accurate if voltage is present. If it does tell you it's there, you can be pretty confident it's there. But if it doesn't give you an indication, I like to have a backup plan, uh, like my electric meter with its probes that I can contact into the circuit to verify whether or not voltage is present. There are aspects of working in a solar field uh, where the DC voltage will be present whether you want it to be there or not. Uh, so you have to be especially careful. And tools like this that can detect AC voltage won't detect DC voltage. I've also seen people try to use an AC meter to check whether or not DC voltage is present at a site, and that is an, not an effective tool for determining if you have DC. You need a DC specific meter uh, switched over so that it's checking for DC voltage to ensure that the uh, power is isolated or turned off at the point at which you're trying to do some work. We have some training in arc flash work, though it's not the kind of work that we go out and typically do in the field. Um, if there is a piece of energized equipment where arc flash is a potential, we're generally not going to go into those environments. Um, we do have uh, a class two arc flash suit. We have uh, balaclava and face shield and hard hat that's all rated for that type of work. So if we're going to be in an area where there's potential for that, we'll be suited up for it. Um, but generally speaking, we're looking for 24 volts and lower 
uh, is the kind of instrumentation work that we do on a day-to-day -day basis.